In the previous video, we went over the two-player divider selector method. In this video, and probably the next two, we'll be going over the three-player divider selector. So this is sufficiently more complicated, but there is a very good method to it, and it'll make more sense as we go through a couple examples. So here's the situation. We now have three people instead of two. We have A, B, and C. And let's just quickly take a look at what they prefer. So on this pizza, which is a fourth pepperoni, a fourth, uh, sorry, fourth mushrooms, fourth pepperoni, half cheese, um, this is what they prefer. A is indifferent as he as the person was last time. He doesn't care like what part of the pizza he gets. It's all just worth $12 to him, which is the total worth of pizza. So on his mini diagram, we'll just write 12 because that's how much it's worth to him. Now B is a little more picky. B needs toppings. He has no preference which topping he gets, whether it's mushroom, pepperoni, but he needs a topping. So if we draw his mini diagram, we need to put a line here, and this line on the left is worth $0 because it's all cheese and has no topping. But on the right, he has no preference, so that's where all of his $12 go. Um, and now C is the most uh, picky. He also needs toppings, but for him, pepperoni is worth two times as much as mushrooms. So if we draw his mini diagram, again, the part on the left is 0 because it has no toppings at all. But now, since pepperoni on the bottom is worth twice as much, it's going to be $8, while mushroom is $4. Let's quickly check. They add up to 12, and 4 times 2 is 8. So this is how his mini diagram is. So now that we have everyone's mini diagrams, we can start filling in this table um, once we begin cutting. So again, with this divider selector method, you need to choose one person who's going to be the divider. And let's say it's, d it's done randomly, of course. You can do a dice roll or anything. But let's say A becomes the divider for the sake of our um, first cut. So since he's indifferent, he can just cut it anywhere, as long as he cuts into three equal thirds. Let's say he cuts it here, like this, um, like this, and like this. So notice that we have piece one, piece two, and piece three, and they're all equal in size. So he, what's going through his mind is, he doesn't know in the end what piece he's going to get. He doesn't know his uh, other player's preferences. So he just wants to make sure that he will get one third of the pizza in the end. So he cuts it that way. So let's look at his table. So A, piece one is worth how much? Well, it's worth a third of the pizza. So a third of four, uh, 12, which is $4. And the same for pieces two and three. So notice that for him, these will always be equal because in the end, he doesn't know what he's going to get. Now B, let's look at how it's split up for him. So piece one is worth $0 because it has no toppings at all. So this is zero. So all of the worth of the pizza is going to be between pieces two and three. Now piece two also has a big portion of cheese, so that portion is worth zero. But it does have a good portion of pepperoni as well, so we need to see how much that is worth. So it turns out that this piece right here, this piece of pepperoni in piece two of the pizza, is two-thirds of this whole pepperoni piece. So two-thirds of the fourth that is pepperoni. And how much is that fourth that is pepperoni worth? Well, it's worth $6, since it's only half of the toppings. So, to reiterate, reiterate uh, this pepperoni piece is $6, according to him. And he's getting two-thirds of that piece with piece two. So, two-thirds of six will be four. So, this is worth $4 to him. And we can work out piece three, but since the totals have to add up to 12, this has to be eight. So, good. Done with person uh, B. Now, person C is the most picky, so it'll take the most work for us to get there. Um, so again, piece one is easy, zero dollars, because it has no toppings, and he also needs toppings. Um, now, piece two is how much? So since pepperoni is worth twice as much as mushrooms to him, we have to see. So again, the cheese slice is worth nothing to him. And this little tiny sliver of pepperoni here turns out to be one twelfth of the pizza. And this piece here is one-sixth of the pizza, this piece of pepperoni. So this is one-sixth of the total fourth. So what is one-sixth of one-fourth? It is two-thirds. So since this is two-thirds of the total pepperoni piece, and pepperoni is worth how much to him? Eight. So it's two-thirds of eight, which is sixteen-thirds. Sixteen-thirds, and to put it in dollar amounts, that will be five thirty-three dollars about. So I know that these fractions can be hard to work out, so if you need to, go back and work them out for yourself and see how I arrived at this number. So this is 533. We can work out piece 3 just by subtracting 12 minus 533, but let's work it out just to get a feel for things. So now, the remaining pepperoni is worth how much? It's going to be 8 minus 533, so it's going to be 267, 
and add that to how much the mushroom is worth total, which is 4. So 4 plus 267 is going to be 667. And does that indeed add up to 12? Yeah, because 5 and 6 is 11, and then these two uh, cent amount add up to 1, so it's 12. So now, that's the hard part. Hard part is done. Everyone has figured out how much each piece is worth, dollar amount, to them. So now, the two selectors, which is B and C, they have a job to do. They have to make lists of which pieces are fair shares to them. And remember the definition of fair share from the previous video? It's anything that is one-third or more in their own terms. So in this case, it's going to be anything that's $4 or more. So um, in this case, which is cool, that everything is a fair share for everyone. So this $4 is $4 or more, 8, 6, 67, 5, 33. So they are required to list, in their list of fair shares, they must write that. Um, so piece 2 and piece 3 is a fair share for person B. And for person C, same list. Notice that piece 1 is not a fair share for either of them because it's 0, which is less than 4. So now, this is an easy case because uh, it's going to be done randomly, which piece who gets. So let's just say with a coin flip or something like that, um, person B gets piece 2 and person C gets piece 3. So let's see how much money each person has gotten. And uh, the remaining piece goes to person A, so he gets piece 1. So person A has gotten $4, which he knew from the start, and he has gotten a fair share, so check for him. Person two, uh, sorry, person A has gotten four dollars. Person B has gotten piece two, which is worth how much? Um, four dollars. So this person also has gotten a fair share. Notice that he would have liked to get piece three, but he can't really complain because he has gotten a fair share. That's how these games will work. As long as you get a fair share, you have no rational reason to complain because you have gotten uh, either equal to or more than what is what you're entitled to. Now, person C is actually the happiest of all because he has gotten piece three and has gotten $6.67 worth of pizza, which is more than four, which is his fair share. So this, um, in this way, this is how it's split up, and it ensures that everybody gets a fair share. So in the next video, we'll look at another case where the two uh, selectors are kind of arguing for the same piece.